the test activities and tasks uh, within the test process. One goes after the other here. Uh, I did show in uh, another video a short version of these, like five five steps. This is a bit the same, but a bit more explained in more details. And uh, I'll talk about each one of it. So the test planning, the first first one and then it goes on following the test monitoring control and then the test analysis and then test design test implementation test execution test completion that's when you complete everything you could follow all these steps by, by details but uh, it depends on the context uh, this is um, a mind map of the test plan so a documentation you could use a template there are a lot of templates out there i've got templates and my website you can download as well if you want but there are plenty out there i use these as a basis for me to uh, to prepare for my test plan uh, i used to use word document but uh, i convinced the place where i'm working now to use uh, the wiki page from the azure devops which you, if you work with jira it's equivalent to uh, confluence so confluence has that part documentation part as well where you can use uh, so the good thing about this uh, the wiki that you can export as a pdf it's good for versioning something that no one can change after it's been signed off the planning uh, will be much more explained in depth and the further uh, parts of the videos on the section five don't worry too much about it now but uh, this is just to give you a high level overview of uh, what is expected for the test planning Test monitoring control. So the test management, so you have the uh, planning phase and then you have the execution phase. In the planning phase, you, you capture the risk analysis, the test estimation, test planning, test organization. In the execution phase, you, you do the uh, test monitoring control, the issue management, so how you manage your bugs, and then the test reporting evaluation. So have I test what I plan to test? And, and so on. It depends uh, also on the methodology that you're working on. If you're working with waterfall, waterfall V model, or working agile, it might be slightly different. Here, I captured uh, at that phase of uh, the test analysis and giving these methodologies there as an example, waterfall V model it will be as soon as the requirements have been gathered and uh, you work on a test plan, this is where you, you do the analysis of that information. And uh, this is where you think, what about uh, what to test? And uh, that will serve as a measurement for the coverage of you're gonna spend on, uh, on testing on, according to your plan. Earlier in the test analysis, we talked about uh, what to test when I talked about previously uh, what to test and in here is more of um, how am I going to test so given on the V model this will be the, the third step ish the software design I say ish because uh, you can do two things at the same time which is um, as you design as well uh, as you do the analysis you can design uh, as you're doing it the the main advantage of these uh, phases is to discover early bugs <laughs> you know, even before you actually use the system. So the test design uh, techniques as well. So this will be talked about f in future videos as well, but this is just a glimpse of the test design techniques. So the test in the static, you have the static analysis and the review and the dynamics, uh, dynamic testing, you have the white box and the experience based and you have the black box which is more functional non-functional which i i most of the tests are around these but uh, of course you know these are more specialized and uh, not all tests go around that but uh, but these days yeah and then uh, this is like i said this is just a glimpse See, i'm not gonna go in full details now it will be in future videos but uh, it's just to give you a glimpse of what test design means Test implementation after you worked on the test design and then you ready uh, for the implementation uh, on the test environment. And, uh, and the, the question is, do, do we have everything that we need uh, to be able to start testing? Is the environment ready? Have got the test user accounts that can be configured in a way to impersonate the, the users in, in the best way as possible uh, based on the, on a profile, a live profile. Have got all the test cases, all the test scripts. If you're running automation test, 
test suite, the test plan, the environment, all the data set is ready and good to go. And also it's the phase where you do a little bit of exploratory and then that exploratory as well, it can help you document uh, for future tests as well as you go through the exploratory. Test execution. So once you have everything ready, so let's execute that accordingly to, to, to the schedule that you've been planned for. And that this is where you record all the uh, the IDs and the versions of the tests, the item tests or the test objectives and the, the, the test tools. If you are carrying out, of course, some tests will be manual, some will be automated. And this is where you capture the results. You do the analysis of any anomalies that you find, the failures, defects, and all so on. This is where you capture all the defects and raise it bugs. So in a typical report, if you use a spreadsheet or if you use a tool like Azure DevOps or Jira or Test Complete or Zephyr, this is basically what you need to know, you know, passed, failed or not run yet uh, these tests. That's in a nutshell what uh, the execution is. Test completion, what's the completion criteria? It's it's what you set in the beginning of the project. You know, when, when is the time to stop? You know, when, when do you know that? The exit criteria is connected to the test coverage. So the test case design techniques adopted and the risk level of the product varies from one test level to another. Basically, these are the, the criteria here. So specified coverage has been achieved. Uh, no show stoppers or critical defects has been logged. There are very few or non median or low priority defects that don't affect the usage of the product. Been signed off by business as well. Do they accept that? If exit criteria has not been met, uh, the test cannot be stopped. It has to carry on. The, the exit criteria must be uh, revamped uh, or the time should be extended for testing based on the quality of the product and uh, any changes to the test completion criteria must be documented and signed off by the stakeholders. The test where uh, can be released upon successful completion exit criteria. Here uh, is an example. I took this screenshot from uh, from the system that I use. This is of the extension from Azure DevOps. Um, if you use Azure DevOps, you know this, but if you don't know Azure DevOps, in Azure DevOps, uh, there's an extension called uh, the test plan. As you run the, your tests there, minorly or, or automation, then you can produce this uh, progress report. It's just an example, but uh, under this one test plan, I've got 378 uh, test cases. And uh, under these test cases, you have you know steps uh, in each one of those. So this is just showing that 100% did run and 378 has passed but throughout the, the course you see that some did not run obviously from the beginning and as you progress there's some bugs there and then but then the bugs got closed and we retested and passed and there's some not applicable uh, in the end realize oh it's not no longer applicable but it doesn't show here and you can't see the line must be really thin and then within the the test plan then the the number of tests from each particular phase. Uh, so end to end, 13, UAT, 13, functional process test, 326, exploratory to 26 tests. Yeah, so these, these can help support the completion of tests, producing a progress report.